Okay, time to start the third lecture of the third week of the course Domain Specific Languages of Mathematics. Uh, the focus here is Types in Mathematics and we have three parts of this lecture. A little bit of reminder of the DSL definition and how we do it for a specific DSL of function expressions. Uh, then define a syntactic derivative function that takes an expression and, sim and computes its derivative. And then uh, go into the type classes additive and multiplicative and some instances for uh, real numbers, function expressions and actually functions. So, um, a little reminder about the definition of a DSL that we use in this course. So each DSL needs a type of syntax tree, here called syn for syntax, a type of semantic values sem for semantics and then an evaluator that translates from the syntax to the semantics often called eval but when there are several of them we may need to name them differently and uh, this is something we started in lecture one this week a little fun exp uh, data type uh, or a DSL for what we could call one argument function expressions so the data type FineXP, I cleaned it a bit up a bit since from the example on the lecture 3.1. So it has constants. So this is the symbolic representation of a function that always returns a specific real number. Then we have X as the constructor for the function that return, returns its same input, so the identity function. And then we have two uh, recursive data type constructors here, add and mole, for the addition or multiplication of expressions. And we have a few example, for examples here. So we can add x to x, so that's basically, I mean it's uh, it's x plus x, but you could also uh, see it as it should be equal to 2 times x. Um, then multiplication of x and x and e3 is an example of adding e1 and e2 so it should represent the function that takes an x um, adds x to itself and to x squared and then finally for just to have a little larger syntax tree it's the multiplication of e3 by itself and just to see that we got these I'm moving now over to the other pane and let's see what e1, e2, e3 and e4 are. So e4 is a little larger expression. No, uh, now uh, we also need a semantic type. So funsem here is the type of functions from real numbers to real numbers where we have defined uh, that the type real is actually implemented here as double so double precision floating point numbers because we can't really implement the exact real numbers here in a convenient way and then this has the typical shape of an eval function it takes a fun exp so the DSL syntax expression and it produces a semantic value and here I've been um, doing it uh, without expanding the type fun sem but we can see here the type is really a function from real to real so the right hand side here in all cases will be a function. So eval of a constant c, syntactic constant expression c is the function const c and remember if we ask about the type for const here it's a to b to a which means that const 3.0 for example is a function that will always return 3.0 so const 3.0 applied to 7 is 3.0 um, then we have the um, x which is then evaluated as the identity function so if we do eval x 3 we get 3 and so on and addition and multiplication are in turn have helper functions add fun and mul fun and uses this standard pattern of wishful thinking that I've mentioned many times that we recursively call eval on the two sub-expressions we get in this case two functions two semantic values and then add fun will take these two semantic values and produce the semantic result and here uh, in this um, 
live coding file I've actually imported the prelude qualified which means that lots of functions need qualifications so prelude.plus is the way of getting hold of the underlying edition for the real number type so add fun will take two functions and return a lambda expression which computes f apply to x added to g apply to x so we can see here that add fun of id and id well that is a function and we can apply it to 5 and then we get 10 because the first identity function returns 5 the other one returns 5 and their sum is 10 we can also similarly use mul fun id id 5 to see that 5 times 5 is um, 25 and if it's applied to 3 it's 9 and so on okay so these these functions together means that now we can evaluate the test expressions like e1 um, that's a function apply it to 2 so that is 2 times 2 and then we can apply it to 3 <coughs> that's 2 times 3 uh, eval of e2 was the squaring function yeah we can see that it seems to work e3 was the sum of the above so 6 plus 9 is 15 and e4 was the square of, of 15 which is 225 so we now have this evaluator and it translates from syntactic um, expressions representing functions of one argument which we call x and <coughs> returning actual functions in Haskell okay over to the next part where we want to define a syntactic derivative so this eval and funx data type that was already from the last time and we also made parts of deriv that time but this is a, a reminder uh, I will split here so I can see the data type declaration while still starting to define the derivative so first the specification what is the derivative function supposed to be doing so this is the intention so if we compute the derivative of e which is a syntactic expression and then evaluate it to a function we should get the same function as if we first evaluated it and then applied the true mathematical derivative operation capital D uh, where D is not implementable in Haskell spelling today so as D is not implemented in Haskell then we specify that we want another operation deriv which will do the corresponding thing on the syntax okay so the type here is from fun exp to fun exp so it will take and return syntax and it should have the same cases as the eval function so I will copy the shape and then remove the right hand sides so I will replace all uses of eval with deriv and then I will have to see what I can produce whoops, uh, for the right hand sides here so it's not going to be add fun it's going to be deriv so add d let's call it and mul d know where my cursor went okay add D and mal D oh I'm pressing control D I think instead of shift D okay <coughs> so uh, this we will also need two helper functions here but we already talked about those last time so let's directly say this a constant functions derivative is constant 0 uh, and the identity functions derivative is constant 1 okay let's check first if we got it reasonably correct okay so um, we have a few syntactic problems here so uh, mainly we have forgotten to define add d and mal d which both have the same type they take a fun exp well, they take two fun exp and they return a fun exp so 
Now if we try to do this, we can start by defining add d. So it takes a syntax um, tree, which is the derivative of e1. Uh, let's call it e1 prime, and then e2 prime, and then it becomes equal to, well, add e1 prime e2 prime. So if we have already computed the derivatives of e1 and e2, it's easy to just add them up. Okay, now it complains we haven't defined mul, which is fair, because we haven't. Um, so mul, let's, let's first just say error to do, uh, and uh, simplify this case a little bit. So actually, add just uses the same arguments on the left and right hand side, so we can just say that add d is actually add. Okay, now if we try to implement mul d in the same way, so here we got e1 prime and e2 prime, and we try to write the right hand side, then we will get into trouble. So the thing is that uh, what we usually need to write when computing a derivative, let's put it outside of the comment here, so the derivative of in this case it's called e1 times e2, that should be the derivative of e1 times e2, let's be explicit here with parentheses, plus the expression e1 with e2 prime. So actually we don't have enough information here to compute mal d. So we cannot define it in this shape, we need more information this was a very strange jump again. So what I will do here is I will say uh, add e1 and e2 as arguments because then we will have all, all the things we need. So e1, I'm not sure if this is going to work if my keyboard is acting up like this, e1, e2, and now we can do what we wanted to do, or at least almost. So this is what I would like to write and then it complains about lots of things and the thing is that the main problem here is that we don't really have multiplication for syntactic expressions and to make sure that we don't do strange things I've also hidden multiplication completely so we don't have any star operator so just like we'd write this mol because it's syntactic anyway and we can also write this one mol so <coughs> then there's the addition and that we can recognize is the add constructor. So this is a reminder that we're talking about syntactic um, definitions here and the complaint that remains is that MALD doesn't have the type that we said it should have. It actually takes even more arguments. It takes four fun exps to compute its result. We will return to that next week and see uh, what this means for uh, MALD and what to do about it. Okay, now it doesn't complain anymore. Then we have an expression, uh, and but we also remember that we would like to see this kind of expression later. So uh, we'll get back to that when we define the first cases. But before we move down to the type classes, let's see if we can uh, check if this does the right thing or what we would expect. So first of all, we had um, the definitions of e1, e2, e3, and e4, and we would expect, just naively from looking at this, that e1, the derivative of e1 should be, well, it's, the, it's 2x, so it should be constant 2. And the derivative of e2, which is x squared, that should be something like constant 2, uh, well, two times um, x. At least that's what we would like it to be. So let's see what it actually computes. So we do deriv of e1 and then we say ah, add c1. So let's compare that to what we... So the real thing we got was add c1 c1. Well, I guess that is morally speaking equal to add to, to actually see 1 plus 1, which is then equal to C2. 
Okay, so even if it wasn't syntactically the same, semantically it seems to be the same. Uh, okay, let's look at the other case, deriv e2. And then it says something a little confusingly complicated. Let's splice it in here. So add, let's break the line to see better. It adds the multiplication of the constant 1 with x with the multiplication of x with constant 1. Well, okay, we can actually see that this simplifies. So this is equal to uh, 1 times x is x, x times 1 is also x, so this is equal to just the addition of x and x. And, well, add x, x is, at least morally speaking, uh, equal to the multiplication of a constant 2 with x. But notice that the shape of the syntactic tree here is really very, very close to the definition. I mean, it, this there is no simplification happening over here. The, the only thing that happens is in adding constructors. So it would probably be good to also implement a simplifier, an expression simplifier that folds in multiplications with one and so on and collects the constants. Uh, we will not spend time on that here, but it's good to note that um, it is very sort of stupid when it comes to computing derivatives. It's correct, but it's not uh, very clever. And what the specification says though is that these two expressions, the, the one we've written and the one it computes, should evaluate to the same thing, and that is true. Okay, just to check what about this lack of simplification, what's the derivative of E3? And now let's uh, hide this to see better. So this is starting to become a little long. So it's the addition of the addition of two ones with this multiplication expression. And if we go all the way to E4, it's pretty clear that we really need a simplifier. Uh, that's one of the exercises in the book. So I encourage you to try it out. And there is also in the GitHub repository for the course, there is a, a suggested solution if you want to look at it. Okay, now let's move on. And uh, we were saying that we would like to write expressions like this with addition, multiplication, and so on. And um, to get there, uh, we will define a few type classes. <coughs> so first, the type class additive. So this was mentioned perhaps earlier, but let's define a type class additive for a type A is something where we have an operation called plus from a to a to a and a zero of type a. So just with that definition then we can say zero plus zero uh, okay and then it says no instance. So what has happened here is that now we have an empty set of instances of the class additive and of course that's not very useful so let's set out to make it at least a singleton set of instance singleton set of instances and the syntax here is instance additive and I will add the simplest one first so real numbers where and then this addition should be the addition in the prelude and zero should be the zero which I haven't hidden from the prelude. So let's see now if I load it again we could write zero plus zero and it would evaluate to zero it wouldn't complain. So actually at this point so before the instance declaration we have no instances and now we have a single now we have one instance uh, cool on, real okay but um, let's uh, move on to other instances later but first uh, add also multiplication because we had in the type before both addition and multiplication and I will go back to the live Whoops. File here. 
Okay, so we want also multiplication, so I will copy the class declaration um, and I will say something very similar. I will say multiplicative. So the type is multiplicative, is there as a multiplication and a unit. I call it one. And then at this stage um, we only have um, I should split again. Uh, we only, if I try to reduce this one, like one times one, it will just say there is no instance for multiplicative. So in the same way as before, I will add an instance multiplicative real, where then multiplication is the prelude multiplication and one is equal to one. Whoops. Okay, uh, now we can write an expression like 1 times 1 or 1 plus 1. Ah, nice. And uh, let's actually add that as an example. So 2 is 1 plus 1. And then the question is, why is it complaining? Well, it's not quite sure what I mean. And there is a, a restriction in Haskell called the monomorphism restriction, which says that if it's not quite clear, then it wants you to, to say uh, the type you intended. So the type here could be real, because that's currently the only instance that's available. And, and now 2 would be 2.0, but I would like to have the most general type here, and that's let's see what it's actually using. So one here means that it has a type which is required to be multiplicative, uh, but it also, because of the addition, needs to be additive. And this is a syntax saying that there are two constraints on the type, which is only A, but it needs to be both additive and multiplicative. If I do this and evaluate it, it will still be two, but they have the possibility of instantiating it for other types. And what other type? Well, it would be natural, as we talked about FunExp before, to look back and see what the FunExp data type is giving us. So we have a constructor for addition and a constructor for multiplication in this data type, so it should be possible to make instances for addition and multiplication. So let's say instance additive funexp where addition equals add and zero equals const zero. And also we could ma make an instance for multiplicative funexp where multiplication equals mul and 1 equals c1. So now um, we've made two instances here of the very similar shape and now the set of instances of the class additive it has two elements. So now both additive and multiplicative, I thought I would uh, have two instances, real and fun exp. So there is some use for an expression like two because it could mean different things. So let's see, if I just say two, it will default to double, but if I say two is actually a fun exp, then Using these instances, it will realize that it's an addition of 1 and 1. So <coughs> that's a nice example. Um, and with this instance in place, we can go back and simplify the expression for the derivative. So if we move up a bit, so remember we had this uh, candidate expression. So we know that this one works, so let's comment that one out. And let's see what now happens if we use this other alternative. And now that one type checks. And just to make sure, we can see if the 
com computations of the divert uh, well actually first let's directly use MALD uh, well okay MALD is a little boring so let's use the deriv then instead of E1 and deriv which doesn't use MAL so that's boring deriv of E2 that was the multiplication remember so this one still does exactly the same thing as before but now I can use this notation with multiplication infix and addition infix even if I'm using funexp okay so I've now provided a completion of the definition of derivatives with also, also the multiplication case and I provided type classes with two instances um, and you sometimes saw, say one too many when you count and I would now get want to get to the many part so if we make yet another code block we can see can we actually do a, an instance for additive and multiplicative so here's the question um, uh, make an instance for functions so we have already an instance for syntactic representations of functions but now we want to make an instance for real functions okay let's see what we mean by that so we say instance additive for well something like a arrow b um, where and then we have to figure out a way of doing additions of functions so this is uh, add fun and this is mal fun and we had something very similar before uh, let's see if we split this one and look we had add fun up here which was specific for real number functions and let's see if we can make a version of this which is more general so let's take the code for add fun and mal fun and try to modify it so malfun we only use later and now I've called it just, as, just add f and the first thing I will do is actually remove the type signature and see what would this be doing okay first it complains that it's a bit ambiguous now so uh, the multiplication and addition would be ambiguous so let's instead um, of using the prelude addition here use our new addition so that means basically just removing the prelude prefix okay and sorry I made a mistake here because I was a little quick so this should be multiplication sure but that's in another declaration multiplicative a arrow b where this is mal f and 1 equals 1 f and this should say 0 equals 0 f okay we can't load this yet because there are a few definitions which have not been provided so let's provide at least skeleton definitions for 0 f and 1 f so 0 f should be error something and 1f should be error something else okay now it's getting close um, there is no instance for multiplicative arising from the use of malf so now let's uh, focus on this side so in the multiplication um, instance here we are a little too um, too ambitious we say that this should be for any function a to b whatsoever and then we want to use multiplication um, here for some underlying type b so this is only true if we already know in well in one case that this is additive b and the other th case that it's multiplicative b it looks like I still fit this just before the end of the screen nice so um, now I'm trying to give it a little more to work with and now it actually type checks 
So what it says here is that if the type B is something that Haskell knows how to do addition for, then it will also learn how to do additions for functions returning B. And we, we have already provided the definition of add F and mul F, but we haven't said what types they should have. So let's see what Haskell tells us. So what is the type of add F? Okay, let's insert this. And I will actually rename the types just to match what I set up there. Um, so we actually used um, B instead of A, and we used A instead of T, just to be recognize it better. Add F. Okay, so we had now saying if B is additive, then we can take two functions in and return one function. And this is the function. So we have the same code as we had before. Add fun. Well, almost the same code. This used the prelude plus, prelude plus, and we used the, the our local plus, but very similar code. And we made it more general. Um, then, not surprising, we can use the same um, kind of type signature here. So let's add that. So instead of additive as the requirement, it's multiplicative because it uses multiplication on the B type. Okay, so now I have these two defined. I should also do something very similar for 0 and 1. So the 0 functions type is, if I can do additive on the type B, then I will uh, I will produce a function from A to B for any A. And actually 1F uh, is very similar. So 1F says that if B is multiplicative, then A arrow I can produce a function from A arrow B. So what should this function be? Well, whatever its input, it should return 0. So this is actually const 0. And here, whatever its input, it should return 1. So this is const 1. And notice that I write here 0, not 0, because 0 would be the real number, while this is the uh, type class member in the underlying requirement of additive B. OK, so now I have made definitions. Now let's see how they work. So how do we get hold of some functions to add? Well, so we had the examples up here, but they were syntax. So let's define down here corresponding examples. So f1, f2, f3, and f4 are actually functions, well, in this case, from real to real. And each such function, we can actually define them this way. Uh, sorry, f3 and f4, they should be if we map the function eval over the list e1, e2, e3, and e4. Let's first check if that works out. Okay, what is f1? Well, it's a function, and we know already that's the doubling function. f2 is a squaring function, and so on. So now we got some functions in our hand which we can try to add and multiply. So if we take e1 plus e1, no, sorry, f1 plus f1, we get a new function. So how do we apply this function to a value? Well, we have to use parentheses, otherwise it will think we are only applying the second function to a value, and that won't type check. So this combined function applied to 3 gives us 12, because f1 applied to 3 is 6, and we do it twice. Similarly, we can compute uh, the addition of f1 and f2, which is basically the same as f3, the way it was defined. And we can also, uh, well, of course, multiply them. Let's say f3 times f3. So f3, if you remember, um, was 15 and then f3 times f3 applied to 3 is the, the squaring function. So as you can see, we can um, 
take the example function real to real and multiply them. And then we can ask ourselves, what types do we have in this set of instances now? So which types are now in the set of instances for additive and multiplicative? Well, we know that it contains real, and we know that it contains fun exp. And then we have this instance declaration, which we just disappeared out of screen, uh, that says that if we have an instance, we will have another one. So, for example, as we've seen, uh, we also have real arrow real. Uh, we also have fun exp arrow fun exp. And let's just try one of these fun exp to fun exp functions. So deriv, for example, that has type fun exp to fun exp means I can add a deriv to deriv. Okay, it's a function. What on earth does it do? Let's apply it to some example. I say e1. So this is perhaps not obvious to see, but it's this is the addition of the two expressions for a derivative of uh, e1 and derivative of e1. So it it just uh, does the sort of addition of the functions. Um, we have already seen additions of functions of the first kind. Uh, but note that um, there is no restriction on the type a in this instance declaration. So for example, say a function from string to real or a function from string to fun exp would also be in this class of instances. So let's try that. Let's, um, well, I guess we have to define some example function. S1 uh, is a function which takes uh, the name x to 2, and it takes the name y to 3, and it takes everything else to 0. And then another function which takes uh, x to 1, it maps y to 2, and ma maps everything else to 1. So these are, whoops, should be s2. s1 and s2 are functions, well, okay, they, <laughs> they are now using the numeric type system here, but let's bear with this and see what happens if we add up s1 and s2. So it's a function that wants a string, so we can apply it to x, and that's 3. Let's check here. Actually, if we want to see it easy, more easily, maybe we could um, we could line these up. So semicolon is possible to use in Haskell to... Ah, okay. But it doesn't like it because it doesn't like to mix the order of the definitions. Okay, let's, let's not do that then. Um, but we can check that x is mapped to 2 in one of them and 1 in the other, so it means it should be 3. And here y is mapped to 3 and 2, so if we apply the sum of these to y, we will get 5. And then anything else, like my name, it will map to 1, because the first function maps it to 0 and the other to 1. Okay, so that was an example that this function is in there. Uh, but interestingly, the instance declaration is recursive. So it says if something is additive, function from A to B is also additive. That, and this includes the things we already have. So for example, a function from real to real to real. Or a function from string to real to fun exp. They would all be possible to add. So maybe it's not very... Well, let's, let's see. Uh, so, so let's try to add up the lambda expression x, y, z goes to x times, no, x, y, I only had two arguments there, to x times y with uh, the lambda expression x, y goes to 1 minus x minus y. Okay, I don't have minus in scope, so let's do plus instead. I only define plus and addition here. Okay, so that's a function. Let's call it age, and let's see what the function age is doing for zero. 
0. Okay, so if I multiply 0 by 0, it takes 1 plus 0 plus 0, so that's 1, and, and so on. So as you can see, we can add and subtract functions of different types. What is worth noting, that addition and multiplication always has homogeneous types. So um, we don't have any addition of type, say, um, int to real to double to real to something. So these, these two types have to match up. Um, all the three uh, starting types have to match up. So for example, if we try to say um, we want to add up the lambda expression x to well, we have to make sure that they have different types. So, uh, for example, we have the type f1 plus e1. And that won't work. Or um, f1 plus... So f1, remember the type of um, f1 here. It's real to real. And then we have the type of s1. So if we want to add f s1 f and s1, it will say, well, it can't ma match characters with doubles. So they have to have the corresponding types. They can't have different types and they can't have different numbers of, of arguments. But otherwise um, we have a quite a rich set here. So I mean this is just dot dot dot. There is an infinite collection of types uh, for which we can do addition and multiplication at this stage. Okay, to sum up um, what we said from the beginning was that we should look at the reminder of a DSL definition. We had here the domain specific language of expressions of one, uh, of, yeah, of syntactic expression of functions of one argument. Uh, we defined the derivative function that operated purely syntactically on these expressions. And we defined instances of additive, we defined the classes additive and multiplicative, and we defined instances for double or we call it real, fun exp, and arbitrary functions from A to B. And uh, this was all for today. Thanks.